beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Comey Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Praise God forevermore. We bless the Lord for another opportunity again to keep sharing fellowship and we'll continue on the reasons why we have to praise God. Amen to Jesus. There are numerous reasons why we have to praise God, but uh, we're just going to be looking at a few. And um, I believe these reasons are more than enough for us to praise God on a daily basis. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we'll be looking at um, two of the reasons. We looked at the first one um, because God is great and willing to be praised. That was a wonderful teaching. I encourage everyone to go and look and listen to that teaching. Then the next one, because he's righteous, and that was also a wonderful one. We encourage everyone to listen to that teaching. Today, we're going to be looking at another reason why we have to praise for that. That is the reason we see in Psalm 113, verse 3. It says, from, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. For the Spirit grant us revelation into your word in Jesus' name. Now, this reason here makes us understand that the Lord's name is to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. So, why are we to praise God? We are to praise, we are to praise God because His name is to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. That simply means that from the beginning of the day to the closing of the day, the Lord is meant to be praised. What is what does it imply? One reason that if you have no reason to praise God at all, one major reason why you praise God is because the day began at all. If the day did not begin, then <laughs> let me say it like that, then there's, there will be no reason to praise God in quotes. You know, that's why they said, Oh Lord, um, the dead cannot praise you. Why can the dead not praise? Because the dead does not experience the rising of the sun to the going down the same. And that's why I said the dead cannot praise God. Are we together? Yeah, because they are not under the category of those that say, okay, it's daybreak and then it's it's night. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now so once you enter the category among the category of those who can see the daybreak, who can know that the day has the day is break, you know, and then the night has um, come, are we together? Then you are under the category of those that are meant to praise the Lord. Um, it, um God told um, um Abraham, as long as the covenant of day and night, as long as the covenant of day and night exists. Said that this is my covenant with you shall keep standing. Now, what does that imply? God is attached to the covenant of the night. Why? Because even God knows that his praise is attached to the day and night covenant. So he knows that the day, day and night stop existing for an individual. That person does not have any right to keep praising him again on this on this um plane. Praise God forever. Now, if the person is born again, then he has the right to continuously praise God in um, a time where there is no day and night. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But so long as the person is on this mortal plane, the basis for the, for praises remains day and night. Now, so it's important we understand that our pra- day must begin with praise. Our day must begin with praise. Why? Because the Bible talks, tells us straight. It says what? Praise it. Uh, it says what? From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sun, the name of the Lord is to be voiced. Praise. For when the sun rises and when it goes down, rises at the east, settles at the west. But when it rises to when it goes down, what does that actually mean? Yeah, we know that the day begins by 12 a.m. But as it were, most of us get more conscious when the sun has begun to rise. Yeah, when the day is when the sun has begun to rise. When the day is done, we are not many. Some of us are, are still sleeping, praise God for more. But on the larger scale, you are supposed to be awake when the sun is rising. If the sun is rising and you are refusing to awake, then you need a special, special prayer. Yeah, praise God for more. Hallelujah. And so it makes us understand that the sun is meant to rise with our praise. The sun is meant to rise with our praise. So what are we meant to do? We are begin to we are meant to begin our day with praise. You know, some of the times the devil, like they say, what you go to bed at night with is the most important thing in your day. And more often than not, what you go to bed at night with 
it will be what you wake up with in the morning. Now, so that is why it's with the Lord is to be praised from the rising of the sun to the what? The going down of the same. Why? If God becomes the important thing as your day begins, and it becomes important thing as your day ends, it will automatically become the important thing when your day begins again. Yes. If praising God is important to begin your day, and it's important to end your day, it will definitely become the important thing for the new day again. That's why it is praises is meant to be what? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the what? Of the same. That's what praise is meant to be. That's what praise is meant to be. It's meant to be the most important thing in your day. But how painful is it that many things take, import, take, take the place of praises in our day? And there are many things that are important to us at the expense of praise. If you look at a lot of Christians, we have a lot of things that are bogging our minds, a lot of things that are sometimes I just wake up in the morning and a lot of things run my face. I said, no, no, no. You can't, no, you can't, you can't, you can't begin your day like this. You can't, is it? And let me tell you, the mind is a serious battlefield where anything you allow win, you just win with ease. Landslide victory. You can't tell myself, no, no, you can't, you can't. I refuse you to begin your day like this. And you see, if you don't take that deliberate decision to make that stance that your day cannot begin like that, some people just allow life to happen to them. You see, if you allow life to happen to you, it will happen to you. Praise is intentional because the devil intentionally shoots arrows of worries into our minds. So praise is not an emotion. No, praise is a decision. That's why when the sun is rising, you decide to rise with the sun with praise. It's a decision. You don't, it's people thing that praise is a gift. Praise is not a gift. It's a garment, but it's not a gift. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that garment, you have to be ready to wear it for it to come on you. Because if you're not ready to wear the garment, the garment will just be suspended and waiting for the time you're ready. And when you're not ready to wear that garment, maybe you can wear different garments. There's a garment of sorrow, there's a garment of, of complaining, there's a garment, many garments, there are many garments, many garments, many garments. And you can, you can, you see, if you reject, the, auto, the automatic rejection of the garment of praise is the imitation of any other garment from the devil. It can put the garment of depression. It, it can put the garment of confusion. He can put the garment of sorrow. And you know the devil has many, many evil garments to put on the, on, on the sense. But it is a deliberate decision to wear praise as the sun is rising. If you can, if you can praise God with the rising of the sun, you will see a reason to praise him with the setting of the sun. But if you don't see any reason, to praise God when the sun is rising. Most definitely, you may not see any reason to praise Him when the sun is setting. Is that why some people they are halfway to their day and they are not seeing any reason to thank God? You know, when I met somebody today, I was just um, encouraging the person and then um, 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 told the person about our ministry and everything about. You know, why encouraging the person? I actually was encouraging myself. Why talking to the person? I was really like, wow, really, I, 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 I really. Talking to myself, I hear what I'm saying. And I was like, there, there, there are many reasons to be thankful to God. Too many reasons. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. There are so many reasons to praise God. A, a, a million and more reasons. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Now, the actual fact is that the reason why you think you should not praise God is actually the reason why somebody is praising God. And if you do not start it well with praises as the sun is rising, you must you will definitely not see any reason to praise God at the close of the day. Because for you, the whole day is going to be messed up. We align our day and we arrange our day when we allow the day rise with the sun rise of praise. The day is just organized. You see, some of the time you think that some people they just have the best day, that's why their life is the best. No. They, they have learned how to praise God in the most of volatile situations. And so they have the best day. Oh, what is the reason why I should praise God for today? The sun rose. See, as long as the sun rose, oh, I see a hope. I see a hope. If I didn't see the sun rise, that means there's no hope to there's no hope for life again. 
you know, as I was talking with the pastor, some, as I told her some days, I said somebody was telling me he lost money, and um, and, and um, you know, uh, someone was saying that the person said the is, is angry with God because he lost money, and I was like, if you're angry with God because you lost money, it actually means that you do not have hope that God will restore. Are you going on saying? If you are angry with God because you lost a business, you lost money, it means that you have lost hope. Let me not even go to faith here. You, do, you have lost hope that God will ever restore you. You have lost faith that you ever get anything from God. And that's the reason why we have to praise God. Because praising God is our show, is our show of the um, fact that we have hope that God has something good for us. Yeah, yeah I must have experienced some losses. Oh, I've expressed quite a number of losses. As I was walking today, I remember what um, God said, God told him, he said, God told him, if you have lost anything in life, and the reason why you have not lost everything. You've had some losses, yes, that is part of life. But the question is, did you see the sun rise? Say yes, and then there's hope. There's hope. And that's why we have to praise God with the rising of the sun from the rising of the sun. Not when the sun is midday. If you wait in midday, ah, you have had a lot of rub, rub, rubbish run through your mind. And you see no reason to actually praise God if you wait in midday. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's how we start off from when the sun is rising. So that you give the devil a reason to have a heart attack. Just give him heart attacks from the day. He's saying that, man, I, I really got this guy down last night. He's not going to say any reason to praise God this way. But as the sun is rising, you are giving the Lord your praise. So you give the devil a heart attack before the day starts. So that he knows that he's in for a bad day. You prepare him for a bad day before the day begins. You don't allow the day get halfway. Then you now start trying. No, he's already got to you before that time. And when we praise God as the sun rises, we are getting into the covenant of day and night with praise. And you see, our God is a covenant keeping God. When we praise Him with this covenant, everything that is uh, uh, engraved into the covenant, we find its full expression in our lives. So, when God told him, as long as the covenant of day and night exists, God was committing Himself to nature. Nature is a product of God. But God was using nature as a bond for himself. Now, watch this very well. God only uses his word to bond himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. That was the heavenly passing in my word never pass away. It says, So you say what I'm going on my mouth, it shall not return, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. God's word is his bond. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so nature is a product of God's word. Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. Uh, Verse 3, and God said, Let there be light, and there was that. And then God began to continue speaking. Now, so nature, this day and night, is a product of God's word. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now let's look at it this way God's born is His word, and then nature is a product of God's word. So let's look at this day. You have God, you have His word, and His word created nature. So as it were, the word is in between God and nature. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God. But if you also deal with anything, it's his word. Not even nature. But for God to now let his word pass through his word and now get into nature and say, as long as the covenant of day and night exists, it makes us understand that the, the, the covenant of day and night is a very important covenant as it has to do with God and his word. And when we, uh, when we enact the covenant of day and night in the place of praise, we just put ourselves in the realm of God. His word is his bond. But now he had to bond himself with the covenant of day and night. He had to use a natural covenant to bond himself. He doesn't need a natural covenant to bond himself. His word is more than enough to bond himself. But just to come to Abraham's level, he used a natural covenant to do what? To bond himself. Now, if we want to enjoy the, that kind of um, um, blessing that Abraham enjoyed, for God to have come to Abraham's level to bond himself with nature, if we want to enjoy that, then we have to also apply the same principle, which is the principle of what? Day and night. The rising of the sun to the going back to the sea. 
And how do we apply that? It's in praises. So, God says, as long as the covenant of day and night exists, then you also say, as long as my praise is with the rising of the sun and the going down of the sun. So, when you apply your praise with the covenant of day and night, you are aligning yourself with God as regards that covenant. I know what? What he promised to Abraham, once you engage praise, you just partake of it without struggle. Amen. Once you engage praise day and night, the rising of the sun and the going down the same, once you engage praise in that order, you just align yourself to the covenant. And we're talking about the great praise. It doesn't mean you just have to go to one corner or you have to start praise and start singing that. No, 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 no. A very hard word went like mercy, but the broken spirit drive the bone. Let praise flow from within. Lord, I praise you. As the day is rising up, as the sun is rising, Lord, I praise you. Let there be a sweet song in your spirit. Let the Bible says, say, Psalm, the Psalm says, My heart is indicting a good matter. Just praise the Lord from within to without. Let's sing unto the Lord a new song. I remember some years ago, the Lord told us that a new song basically is whenever you wake up in the morning, that song, that song that just flows through your spirit, the Lord says, That is a new song. The Lord taught us that one, 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 of our, one of our meetings. Now, that way you wake up in the morning, that song of the Spirit, that, that it might be a whole song. For the Lord is good. For the, it might just be a whole song. For the Lord. That song of praise that just comes through your spirit in the morning when you wake up. That is the new song. Why? Because the Bible says the mercies of God are what? Are new every morning. So for you to wake up that morning with a new song is because of a new is because of a new mercy. And so it's the new mercy that gave you that new song. That is why it's a new song. So a new song does not necessarily mean it has to be a new composition. This is where we get it wrong sometimes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the years. We think it must be a new composition. No, 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 no. That song of praise that comes from your spirit that new day, every new day, every new day, that song of praise is yet the of the new mercy of God for that day. And that new mercy has given you a new song. So you sing the song and sing it and sing it till you, till you, till you, till you get the juice from inside of it. You sing it when the day, when the, when the sun is, ri- is is rising, and then when the days when the sun is setting, the Lord will give you another song again. It may still be that song, it may be another song, but that song that comes of praise to the Lord as the sun is setting, sing it. Not only singing the songs, say the praise to the Lord. Just say to the Lord. When we see when we do this, we align ourselves to the covenant of the. And you know what? This covenant, you know, the devil, you, you see, you begin your day with praising God. You, you not, the Bible says, give no place to the devil. When you begin your day with praising God, you refuse the devil to have a place. Mm-hmm. And then you end your day with praising God. You've also ensured that he doesn't have a place at the end of the day. So what place can he take? You see, some of the time think we just have to keep praying, praying. No, 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 no. It's good to pray. But may just have a, have a praiseful spirit mm-hmm. as the sun is rising. Have a praiseful spirit as the sun is setting. Have a praiseful spirit. Just praise God. You see, I, 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 I was just walking today and I was like, wow, there's always hope. There's always hope. You see, I've never been so hopeful in my life like this period. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I've, 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 if, if, you've go, if you've been through what I've been through, you would, you, you would know that to be hopeful at this point, it really takes God. I get what I'm saying. And I'm not surprised why the Lord gave us praise genuinely. And He has wanted us to maintain the praise spirit. Because I tell you the truth, many people that commit suicide is because they lack praise. They don't praise God. Even Christians that are committing suicide, Christians that are, are, are anxious and that they don't have a praiseful heart towards the Lord. You see, anxiety steps in when praise steps out. Fear steps in when praise steps out. When their praise is done with the assurance that God loves me. It's the, it's the assurance that God loves me. See, God loves me. That's praise. That is, is, is a deep-rooted assurance. It's a deep-rooted assurance. God loves me. So, I'm praising not because, as it were, I have seen what I'm looking for. You get what I'm saying? But He loves me. He loves me. You see, for me to wake up to see the rising of the sun is his love. David said that this. I slept and I woke up. 
It was the Lord that sustained me. It is his love that woke me up. You know, it's painful. I, I, sometimes that video I saw keeps running through my mind. And I was talking to somebody today, and I was like, it, it so broke my heart to see somebody jump from a, a high mast and just ended his life. Some climbing transformer and a high tension and dying. It's painful. But you see, these things come because the devil has made them believe that God does not love them. And God does not care about them. But you see, if you saw the new day, if you saw the sun rise, it is a proof that God loves you. Say, but how will God love me and I'm lacking and in lack of It's not about your being in lack of it's about acknowledging that God loves you first. Because when you acknowledge that God loves you, only then will you begin to see God's provision. Lack of understanding of the love of God will blind your eyes to the provision of God. Her girl was crying and crying. And she left her son Ishmael by the, by, by, behind her and was crying. And the angel came and she he said, why are you crying? He said, no, the water is, uh, 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 is out and I cannot watch this boy die. And she was like, the angels bled, spoke, with her, spoke to her about the son and every of that. And at the end of the day, by the time she was done, the angel, she saw that the, there, was a, there was a well of water by her side. Now, the well was there, but because she was overwhelmed in her tears and in her fear, she couldn't see the well. Now, until the angel came, she couldn't see the well. Now, until we are conscious of the love of God, we cannot see the provisions of God. So, the consciousness of his love is very important. Many people that commit suicide, they just wonder they were close to the, they were close to their breakthrough. They were always close to their breakthrough. They are always people that keep commit suicide, they are always close to their breakthrough. People that give up are always close to their breakthrough. It's always when you're almost there that you feel like giving up the most. That's why praising God when the sun rises is very important. Because it keeps your heart ready for what God has for that day. It keeps you hopeful. It keeps you alive. I you know once you are hopeful, the devil is messed up. You know, even people that love one again, when they are hopeful, the devil, the devil stays far. Once you are full of hope, the devil is messed up. The Bible says, there is hope for a tree if you be caught out. And at the scent of water, it shall sprout again. Remain connected. Teaching continues shortly. Beloved, we will like to introduce to you one of our latest book releases. Titled, Hello Beloved, Get Moving. Authored by Chimdi Ohahuna. This book, Hello Beloved, Get Moving is one great resource for everyone who desires to change levels in life, earnestly wants a change in their experiences and outcomes, and lacks the needed push to achieve this goal. Also, there are times in our lives when we become aware of the need to go higher, advance, and move forward. However, circumstances beyond us make this desire almost impossible. The situations figuratively represent the sea, an army, or a mountain. This resource is simple, profound, and easy to understand by all readers. This material is put together to help you discover why you do not need to give up on your dreams in life, how to remove the limits of your life, face every fear, and overcome your fears. There is more to what you can be if only you stand up, gird yourself and get moving now. I strongly recommend this book to everyone who passionately desires to know how to navigate through unknown terrain to achieve their goals and vision. Order a copy today via Amazon. Welcome back. Somebody had uh, listened to a man of God and they talked about a particular. And this, this, this verse of scripture, he never knew how real it was until he actually saw um, a tree that was caught. The tree fell, and it fell, it fell over um, a, a kind of like um, a river. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the what the river was low below. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the tree was above, kind of like it fell over. You know, and created like a bridge. Are you getting me? It it fell and over the created a bridge over the water. Now it was cut off as it were 
and there was basically no um, way it would get water from the roots. Are you getting me? Yeah. But he said, when he saw this scripture was real, was when he, they were passing the tree and they saw that the tree, eh, where it fell, that part started sprouting. The part that was just over the water. The water was not coming to the soil, into the soil. It was not coming to the root because the tree had broken off from the root. But because the tree was just over the water and it sent water, the tree could send water. It started growing. It started growing. So you see, this is one reason why we need to understand how important praising God and the rising of the sun is. Because when we start off with the rising of God, we can send water. We can send water. We can send hope. We can send, you see. <laughs> you know, some of the times, most of the things that we think that are the, are the crossroads, they are not actually the crossroads. They are actually the roads that have, you know, a crossroad is one road, is another road crossing over it. And so, whatever the case may be, if you remove one of the crosses on top, you have a straight road. Whatever the case may be, you can always have a straight road. It's a cross. You go straight, it's a straight road. You go the other straight, it's a straight road. You can always have a straight road. It all depends on your perspective. But this kind of way of thinking, for a child, we only come for a child of God when we know how to arise with praise. As the sun rises, we rise up with praise. See, intentional, intentional, not, not emotional praise. Because if we're going to depend on our emotions to praise God, we'll, know, we'll never praise Him. We'll never praise Him. This praise is intentional. As the day is, right, as the sun is rising, oh, you are rising up with your praise to the Lord. For the Lord is good and His mercy is endured forever. You are by doing that, you are you are enacting the covenant. You are you are making the covenant manifest in your life. The covenant of day and night is a very serious covenant. You see, when God created, are you get what I'm saying? Uh, the day began with the evening. The Bible says that there was the evening and there was the morning. Are you get what I'm saying? The day began with the evening. Are you get what I'm saying? And um, basically, that actually how the let me word the, the challenges of life pre- proceeded uh, present themselves. The challenge, life, life, life gives us the evening challenges before the morning challenges. That's why you say uh, after the night there is always a turn of the day. Are you get what I'm saying? Now, so you see that you, you get to the challenges first, and then you now begin to see the light of the day and every other day, every other. But you see, that is when God created to make us understand how challenges present themselves. But when God was dealing with, when, he, when God came into covenant, He didn't do evening and morning. He said day and night. Day and night. Why? Because He knows that we will have to begin with what? The rising of the sun. And we have to begin that in a place of praise. Praising God. So, understanding this places, you see, it's one thing we have a, God has a covenant with us. Are you getting what I'm saying? The new covenant has been cut by Christ, by His blood. God has a covenant with us. But another thing is that we also have to be partakers of this covenant. You see, grace doesn't just make God responsible and man irresponsible. The new covenant of grace is not making God responsible for us and making us irresponsible forever. No. The new covenant of grace is making God responsible for us and making us partakers of God's responsibility for us. That's how we are partakers of the promise of life in Christ. Partakers. We are partakers. And how do we partake of these covenants? We partake of it by what? Also doing our day and what? Night. God did his day and night for Abraham by saying, as long as the covenant of day and night remain, what happened? These blessings will be in, 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 in place for you. We also have to partake of it by doing what? Our own covenant of day and night. What's our covenant of day and night? Our covenant of day and night is not, is not um, 
and many of the things we call covenants are you getting what I'm saying? A covenant of day and night is from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea. Praise you. Praise. You see, some of the times we think that God has so much heavy things he demands from us. Now God is not actually demanding from us. Are you getting what I'm saying? He's actually supplying to us and he wants us to respond to us in pray, to respond to him in praise and thanksgiving. Now, is it if, if, if I remember when uh, Neymar, when uh, the prophet Elisha and also told him to go and dip himself seven times in Jordan River, and he began to run and shout, I don't know better rivers you we are, we are coming from Samaria, I don't know better rivers, there's river this, there's river that, there's river this. He said, It was then he started calling the names of all the rivers in that country. He had forgotten geography before. But when they told him to go <laughs> deep, he said he remembered geography. And he threw up his hands, his hands are self understand. I don't understand. Though. There's no big problem in this thing, though. Master, if this prophet are going to do something bigger, will you not do it? Will you not do it? See, this is just a small thing. Go and dip yourself in river, 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 river. Yes, yeah, so, you see, funny or not, the things that God asks us to do are the most simple things. The most simple. Let me say, what simple that if in this matter, but we're always looking for big, big, big. Instructions, direction. But God tells us to do simple, very simple thing. Okay, my question: What is there in going to dip yourself in a river, Jordan? What is there? What is there? You say you don't like the river. Okay, you don't like it. So, okay, I travel from my village to here just to come and dip myself in a river. Go and dip yourself in a river, you know, whether you get it. Simple enough. You didn't ask for anything. Some of us. You know, we, we are actually looking for God to ask us for some big things. When we talk about covenant practice, now the person we start thinking of is all the money we have to give, all the uh, um, this we have to do, all the that we have to do. We are meant to just start running wild. Once we hear covenant practices, is that not so? We covenant practices are meant to run wild, run around the whole world. By the time we have come back, we discover that what God was asking us for was just something simple. The servant just told him, it's a simple thing, my, my Lord, that they asked him to do. Just go and dip yourself. Seven times. Seven master. Seven times. Okay, let us try the seven times. If it doesn't work, then you can get angry with the prophet. And then you can start venturing. But before you get angry with the prophet, let us go and dip. Master, I didn't ask you for much. You know, he came with so much gold and so much jewelries and so much clothing and everything that, expecting that, you know, he will be able to use those things to buy the gifts of God. But, you see, God always busts the bubbles. <laughs> and at the end of the day, he obeyed the servant and see how it ended up. A very simple instruction. Same way, what is the covenant of day and night? The covenant of day and night, what as covenant practitioner, how do we participate? How do we participate in this covenant? How do we practice covenant? It's simple. The covenant of day and night is praising God in the, from the rising of the sun and praising to the living of the sea. It's as simple as that. It's not, it's not the covenant of I, I, you have to sow this, you have to pray this, you have to do this, you have to do that. You see, we have been the ones that are giving ourselves problems. Christians, we have to give ourselves plenty, plenty problems. Plenty. You see, one of the things I like to do is to, is to simplify life. To make life as simple as possible. Are you getting what I'm saying? To simplify life. I'm talking with somebody today. I just began to make the person understand and see what you are worrying yourself for. It will come, but if this is just your pathway to it, you know, make your life simple and stop complicating your life. The covenant of day and night is as simple as rising up with the sunrise, praising the Lord, and going to bed with the sunset, praising the Lord. Mm. Say, but is it that simple? Yes, it's that simple. Is it that easy? Yes, it's that easy if you allow me to be easy. Is it that cheap? Yes, is that cheap. You know, one of the, cheap, the cheapest thing to give to God that is the most expensive thing he, to Him is praise. It's the cheapest thing to us, but the most expensive thing to Him. Why do I say cheapest thing? Because it doesn't cost you money to praise God. What does it cost you to praise God? Bread, number one. Number two, seeing the sunrise. <laughs> That's what it costs to praise God. And everything that has bread, praise the Lord. So once there's bread, you can praise. No matter two, once you see the sun, like you can praise. So that's why it's cheap. That's why praise is an equalizer. The Bible says, let everything that has been praise the Lord. It doesn't only say, let every man that, let everything. So everything that breathes in and breathes out, 
animals. Praise the Lord too. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything that happens. So praise is an equalizer. That's why it was that serious that stones don't have bread. Are you getting it? They're inanimate. But it was that serious that when they, they refused, they, when they only refused the children from praising Jesus, Jesus said, you know what? If you have, if you prevent things that have bread from praising me, I will make things that don't have bread to have bread so they will praise me. Mm. Why? Because I'm the custodian of bread. Mm. So if you, because, because this, you are seeing these ones with bread, you want to stop them from praising. Don't forget, bread, God told, God told the, 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 the farmer who said he had, he had filled up his barn and blah, 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 blah. And he said, now my soul will, will, will relax and enjoy. And God said, okay, tonight, your life, that your soul that said wants to enjoy. To, tonight, I will require that soul of you to let you know that the owner of bread. When Jesus told them, when they said they will not allow the children, he said, I will let you know that I'm the owner of bread. So you know what's going to happen? I will take bread from them and put it in inanimate objects and let them start bread. Why? I'm the custodian of bread. I can give bread to who I can give bread to. If I choose not to give bread to stones, it is my choice. But if you think because I did not give stones bread, you are not feeling like a superman, that you, your, your, the bread is not your own, you will not now praise me. Then watch and see. I will do what? I will, that same bread that is in as feeling something like important because of bread. That same bread that makes you feel like a superstar. That same bread that makes you feel like a superman. That same bread is what I'll be putting inside this stone. Now you see a stone praising me now. So you know that you are not different from a stone. After all, when you die, you become, they call you stone dead. Eh? <laughs> Is that what they call you? You are not actually different from a stone. But what I mean different from a stone is because I put, I chose to put bread inside you. Inside you. So if you say they should not, no problem. I will make that you are not different from a stone. I will raise this stone. I will put, I just give the stone bread now. You see, watch, try and see now. Try me now and see. Try me. They didn't want to try. <laughs> try me and see now. If I want just release breath on top stone, now you see stone start praising me. Breath is an equalizer. Sorry, praise is an equalizer. It equals us with every other human being, with every other creature that can pray. That's why like when we don't when we don't even pray seven, the birds in the body hear them praise. When God hears those beautiful sounds, they are praising. Even their voices are more beautiful than some of us. I will not even use our prayer voice to praise. They are praising. Some of them have some ugly voices anyway. But God still likes those ugly voices. Because they, they know how to praise. Praise equalizes us. That's why I can say it's one of the cheapest things for us. Because we do it. The other living creatures do it. Are you getting what I'm saying? I know the funny thing. The other living creatures don't even need anything from God before they do it. They do it because He's God. They just do it. But we, we, need, we, we need to get something before we can praise God. What a work mentality. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then, the dawn of a new day. Every time the sun rises, we are to praise God. That is why praise is very affordable for us. Very cheap for us, but it is priceless and expensive to God. Some of the times people let, tend to undervalue affordable things, that also, and undervalue cheap things. Now, if I tell you to come and do dry fasting with a, what do you call it, with a three hours prayer every day, and then uh, after that, I tell you to go and uh, so a dangerous. You will feel it. Is that also? That's how we feel that we have done something. We have moved God. But you see, it's funny because when we think that we have moved God, we have actually moved ourselves. Are <laughs> you getting what I'm saying? Yes. We have actually moved ourselves. What actually gets to the heart of God? Is that thing that looks like it's not moving God? Because for us, praise does not move God. It's so cheap. We can do it. Animals can do it. Animals don't pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? We eat and we eat, you know. also see. We, the things that we feel we can do, the animals can do, that's what makes us feel that we are moving God. But the actual fact is that that thing that we think equalizes us with animals is actually what is moving God. That is God. And at the rising of the sun, you know, there's a song that goes that is 
Every time I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Everybody say thank you, Lord. Oh yes. Every time I see another breaking of the day, I say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, this song is actually a revelation. And it is based on this scriptural part that is made. From the rising of the sun. Why are we to praise God? Because the sun rose. Mm. If I didn't see the sun rise, that means I'm dead. Mm. Even the blind know where it is. Mm. The sun has risen. Temperature changes. When temperature, you cannot feel change in temperature. You cannot feel it, you cannot see it. It means that you have left this, this plane. When the sun says we feel it, when we cannot see, feel or see the rising and the setting of the sun, it means that we have left it. So why are we to thank God? Because we are still seeing the rising and the setting of the sun. Amen. And when we praise God with this understanding, we make ourselves partakers of the covenant of day and night. There is nothing that can break that covenant. As long as the earth remains, it, there is nothing that can break that covenant. And since that covenant is unbreakable, the effects of that covenant is really made undeniable in our lives. Amen. Since that covenant is unbreakable, the result of the covenant will remain evident in our lives. Amen. That is why we are to keep praising God as the sun rises and as the sun sets. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voices. Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior, we request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, make me your own, and till eternity be my Lord and personal Savior, thank you Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available, to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number, 033-154-551-2013. Swift code, M, B, G, H, G, H, A, C, to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number, 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria, account number 554-102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. Or, send us an email via chimdiohahuna ministry at gmail.com. Today, remain ever blessed. We believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Beloved, remain connected to Grace Life Comey Podcast. Jesus is Lord.